this video we are going to be going over the basic principles of hand tapping the very first thing we're going to do is go over the items that you will need and then we're going to go into actually how to perform hand tapping first thing you're going to need is a tap guide and what a tap guide is is a spring-loaded shaft that comes to a point to help guide your tap handle and you will load this into the chuck and or call it and you will use it to guide your tap into the hole next thing you will need is a tap and this is after of course you've drilled your hole and then you'll either need first thing you're going to need is a tap handle and then there are two different types of tap handles there's a t-shaped tap handle and then there's also a flat tap handle I prefer using the flat tap handle but if your tap does not have a point for the tap guide to go into then you will need a t-shaped that has a point on the end because what's going to happen is your tap guide is going to go on the top you put your tap handle in between and then you'll use this to guide your tap straight up and down otherwise if you try to do it by hand you might start tapping at an angle and that's either going to break your tap or your hole is going to be tapped at that angle so the reason we use the tap guide is for the tap hole to be straight up and down on to actually performing hand tapping the first thing I want to do is make sure that my spindle is directly over the center of my hole so what I've done is I have checked the size hole with the gauge pin and then I'm going to use this gauge pin to put inside my chuck to make sure that I'm over the center of my hole so I'm now putting my gauge pin in my chuck and then I'm going to bring my spindle down and just make sure that you are over the center of your hole and whenever this gauge pin drops in the hole I'm going to know I'm over the center Now if you are really worried about accuracy, you can edge find it and then go to position. But if you're just trying to do a quick location find, then you can use this method. Okay, so now that I'm over the center, and again you can for more accuracy edge find, but if you just want to quickly find the center of your hole you can use this method which is just grabbing a gauge pin putting it in your chuck and then going over the center of the hole until the pin slides through the next step will be mounting your tap guide into your chuck so now the tap guide is directly over the center of my hole the very next step is going to be mounting the tap into the tap handle. <coughs> you want to lower the table until the tap guide falls above the tap handle. Now that we have our table lowered to where we can fit our tap and our tap handle below the tap guide, we are going to crank the table up, not all the way, because a lot of people will crank their tap guide all the way up, but that's not good for the spring. The spring does not like to be compressed all the way, because you will end up ruining your tap guide in the long run. So just put enough pressure on it so that the tap handle is not moving around. You want to add a little bit of Molly D or uh, just tap guide fluid or tap fluid and then slowly start tapping now while you're tapping you can use your quill to slowly go down and follow along with the tap handle and you want to just go until the tap stops 
because if you keep going, it's just going to break off because it's going to be hitting the bottom of a blind hole. Again, I want to use my tap or my quill to ensure that my tap guide is still touching my tap handle. And then I'm just going till it stops. Now that it's stopped, I can back off so I can remove my tap guide completely and just back my tap out. And at this point, we can take it out of the T-shaped and use a flat bar or a flat tap handle. Because with the flat tap handle, you are more rigid, but with this long extended tap handle, you're more, you have more chances to break the tap. So you wanna be sure that you're tapped all the way down. So what we are going to do is take it out, blow it off and re-tap it. And you just keep repeating that same procedure until you know you're tapped down all the way. And that's all it takes when it comes to tap hand tapping. All right, in conclusion of hand tapping, you wanna be sure to use some kind of fluid such as Molly D or tapping fluid so that your tap is lubricated. You want to also make sure not to force the tap into a blind hole. Once you start forcing your tap to go deeper, you will start to hear it crunch. And then at that point, it's more than likely just gonna snap off and break. And then you're gonna have to use an end mill to peck it out. Another thing you wanna be sure to do is ta hand tap it more than once. Because what's gonna happen is, chips are gonna build up in the bottom of the hole because using a cutting tap, you are cutting chips out of the metal. So you have a small hole and you're actually cutting the material out of the way to form the threads. So you wanna be sure to blow it out, make sure the chips are out of the bottom of the hole and re-hand tap it. If you're using a thread former, you can just go all the way to the bottom and come out and you can just hand tap it once. Other than that, that concludes our hand tapping. Just be careful, wear safety glasses because when, chip, when tabs break, they tend to break apart and fly all, fly all the way around the room. It's a little exaggerating, but at the same time, you just wanna be safe, make sure not to get it in your eye. And the only other thing I can think of is to countersink your hole and deburr your hole before you start hand tapping. And this just helps guide it into the hole. Other than that, that concludes our video of hand tapping.